Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. This is a tough case. The patient is 80 years old lady. The challenges we have in this case are this is an intumescent cataract with weak genule and we will see in a short while that the nucleus is very hard and because of peribulbar block the eyeball has turned towards the nose. This is the left eye of the patient. Fortunately we have a well dilated pupil in this case. Let us observe the surgical steps. I have applied a superior rectus brittle suture because I may need to convert to SICS. I have stained the capsule with tripan blue dye. Then the dye is washed out with PSS. The anterior chamber is then filled up with 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. And now, the anterior chamber is also very shallow. And now, side ports. This is a side port on the left side of the main incision. And and now I'm going to try capsulorexis with a forceps. Let's see what happens. I am not able to puncture the anterior capsule with the forceps. This happens when the genule is weak. You cannot pierce the anterior capsule. So I'm making a side port. Through this side port, I introduce a sharp needle, 26 gauze disposable bent needle, and make a puncture onto the anterior capsule. Milky fluid comes out. So the intralenticular pressure is high, the antechamber also shallow. So I make a small rexis first and now I'm going to reduce the intralenticular pressure. Now see the appearance of the nucleus as I remove the white covering. This is a huge and very hard nucleus. Nucleus sclerosis, definitely grade 5 hard brown nucleus or even harder than that. Um, reducing the intralenticular pressure by aspirating some lens matter, some cortex, going through the left side port, right side port is too small. Yes. Adequate amount of lens matter has been removed to reduce the intralenticular pressure to a significant extent so that rexis doesn't run out to the periphery. And because I observe that the nucleus is because I observe that the genule is weak my aim in this case is to do a rexis of about 5 millimeter and I want to I don't want to go to periphery because if this capsule gets into a genular area then I will have a very tough time Though my aim was to do a rexis of about 5 mm, this is probably smaller than that and definitely smaller than what is needed in this case. However, I kept the rexis on the lower side because I wanted to apply this capsular tension ring and I didn't want to go into the area of insertion of 
suspensory ligaments. Now here goes the capsular tension ring into the capsular bag. A Sinsky hook takes the drilling end from the MacPherson's forceps and places it in the equatorial part of the capsular bag. And now I'm going to divide this nucleus into some pieces. At least I'm going to try. I made a small trains first so that I can embed the tip into the substance of the nucleus nicely. and now I go into the substance and I make a crack the nice thing I have done in this case is probably I have placed a seat here already because the junior is weak and if the bag is not supported I will have a very tough time but the rex is, is small and this is giving me a tough time to manage this nucleus I'm just getting some cracks no nuclear fragment is free so I'm rotating the nucleus and making some cracks on the nucleus, as many cracks as I can. So I have made almost six or seven cracks. And now uh, I go to this area and make another crack here. I have to get smaller pieces in this case because the size of the rexis is not adequate for this huge hard nucleus. And all the pieces are joined to each other at a thick stubborn posterior plate. Before I come out, I injected some SPMC so that the whole thing doesn't come out anteriorly and cause stress on the junior. And now I am trying to do some manual work. First, I want to enlarge the rexis a bit. Even a small bit of enlargement may help. This Havana scissor was not okay. So I took another Havana scissor and made a small cut at the margin of this rexus and I'm going to enlarge the rexus though it is a very small amount of enlargement this will help in nucleus management and now I'm going to try to get some free pieces with the help of these two hooks the intercular pressure is very low 
so I inject some visco and now I'm going through two side ports so that visco doesn't leak and intraocular pressure remains normal I'm not getting any piece free piece till now but suddenly I get two halves yes that is nice so this manual work is the turning point in this case from here I knew that I will be able to manage this nucleus and now I go again friends this is a very long video and I didn't want to edit this video much because it has taken half an hour for me and if I reduce this video to about 10 minutes you will not understand the struggle that I went through yes everyone has to go through struggles to do a nice job now I go again and I'm going to emulsify this piece yes I have got it free now it is a free nuclear piece I'm going to emulsify this piece done now I get this piece this is not free but very s tiny band is attached to the other piece so I could reduce the size of this piece and now I turn and go to the other piece yes let me tell about the settings initially I started with 400 vacuum but now later I have reduced the vacuum to 250 I have made the flow rate 30 but the ultrasonic energy is about 80 percent bottle height I have reduced to about 80 or 90 centimeter now before coming again I inject visco some more visco and now I'm going to turn this piece this heminucleus and do some more manual work I knew that I will not be able to get any free piece by lateral separation see what I try to do I have injected visco, I have pushed the posterior capsule behind now I lift this and tint this and I could not cut it, it is very tough so I keep it like this it is like a tent now the joining point of these three pieces inject visco again behind and now I go again with the handpiece my plan is to apply ultrasonic energy at the joining point of these three pieces and here it goes as I apply ultrasonic energy the pieces become free 
and then I start emulsifying. Vacuum is 250 millimeter of mercury. Flow rate is 30 ml per minute. Very slowly I am going to do this. I am keeping an eye all around. I am keeping an eye at the tip. It should be right at the center. I should I am keeping an eye where I am emulsifying the nuclear piece. It should be at a safe distance from the cornea and it is done. For the last piece, I'm going to further reduce the vacuum. I've asked my assistant at this time to go to scalp mode, where the vacuum is only 80 millimeter of mercury and flow rate is 20. Yes, from here, I just went to very low vacuum and it is done. So all is well that ends well. But still it is not over. We have to spend some more quality time for this patient. Very little cortex inferiorly but superiorly from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock there is a lot of cortex. For this I'm going to make another sideboard at 6.30 o'clock. Through this sideboard goes the 23 cores Simco. Simco is very friendly when you have genular weakness because you can use very low vacuum to adequate vacuum. Control is much more with this instrument. And the cortex is nicely cleaned. is done. Though there is CTR, there is hardly any cortex because the lens was hypermature. Peripheral cortex was liquefied. And now is the time to implant an intraocular lens. I have filled up the capsular bag as well as the anterior chamber with 2% SPMC. I enlarged the main wound little bit say by 0.1 millimeter or 0.2 millimeter and here goes a hydrophobic single piece monofocal aspheric intraocular lens. The lens has gone into the capsular bag, but can you see the white line on the posterior surface of the optic of the lens? This is an iatrogenic complication. This is some material from the cartridge. So. I have to remove that material also and it is not going to come out easily. I have to spend a lot of time uh, rubbing onto the optic of the intraocular lens to remove that material. Friends, whenever there is some trouble 
more trouble tends to go into it the only way to overcome these troubles is to have patience and use past experiences uh, i am almost through i am removing the white material which has come and it has got stuck to the optic of the intraocular lens this white material has come from the cartridge and here it is it is it has come off this end also has come off so the optic is clean now some more cleaning of the anterior capsular rim the under surface of the anterior capsular rim and in this process mm, visco also has been removed nicely and now this is irrigation and aspiration because some more visco is there in the anterior chamber angle to avoid post of rise of intraocular pressure we have to clean the visco thoroughly and nicely now this is a bit of moxifloxacin the side port is closed by hydrating corneal stroma the other side port need not be hydrated it has been used only once during capsulorexis and this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber the anterior chamber is nicely formed and the case is concluded Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you to develop your surgical skills and to increase the level of your patience in tough cases.